this easy glide stuff is actually pretty slick. You can put it on all sorts of things, including your sled for the sledding hill to go faster. Hey folks, this is Ryan from ORS Cross Country Skis Direct. I'm here to talk you through the ski, boot, binding, and pull options for our backcountry downhill packages. So backcountry is a big category. Um, you know, anything outside of a sort of maintained area is considered backcountry. So you're talking anything from a logging road where you're talking mostly flat rolling terrain, um, pack snow from people who've come through ahead of you, to your biggest mountain, deepest, steepest type terrain, and all the terrain in between. So we break our backcountry categories into two subcategories, backcountry downhill and backcountry touring. This is the uh, backcountry downhill category. We have four packages, and this is really for, you know, you're looking to go downhill most, so that's your priority. You're in either big mountains, um, so you're going to make your way on your own power to the top to ski down, uh, or maybe you're doing like yo-yo laps on a little hillside nearby. Where you're going to be going up and down, up and down, making turns, uh, getting to the bottom, and going right back up again and doing it over. Uh, you know, well, with the uh, turns, you got to come the urns. you got to earn your turn. So a lot of times you will end up on flats, and that's why these skis will all have fish scales on the bottom to get you around on the flat rolling terrain and up the lower angle ascents so that you can enjoy the fun stuff that you're looking for. So let me walk you through the skis that we offer. Um, we have four categories, as I mentioned, and each, uh, four packages, as I mentioned, and each package has its own ski. Uh, within those packages, though, the boot binding options and the pole options are the same. So we're really talking about the skis, first of all. So in backcountry package, backcountry downhill package number one, we've got the Bole Vector. So here we've got a nice, fat, Ski designed for powder skiing, designed for, you know, to excel in deeper snow. Um, but it's not the widest ski available. Um, it actually, you know, does pretty well on like a groomed surface if you were to take it to a resort. But again, it has a fish scale waxless pattern on the base. So, you know, if you're doing a lot of groomed snow type skiing, you're, you'll notice these scales buzzing a little bit and you might just get yourself a straight up tele ski. Um, but again, if you want that access in the backcountry to move around on flats, get up hills, then you need those scales. Otherwise, the construction is really just like a downhill, or I should say a tele ski. It's light, soft, and has quite a bit of rocker. So if you look at the tips, you'll notice how they splay apart. That really helps initiate turns in deep snow, helps the ski float really well. Um, it's a nice soft ski, lightweight ski, US made ski, uh, the Volet Vector, available in our backcountry downhill package number one. Really nice ski. 112 millimeters wide at the uh, tip. Now, backcountry package number two, you get the widest ski we carry, the Rossignol BC125. Big, big, fat board, nice and soft. Um, they don't have as much rocker. Um, a little bit when you flex the skis, they will splay apart just a little bit. But really, it's more of a traditional kind of backcountry tele ski, where it has you know a pretty soft flex. Um, Again, full metal edges, of course, waxless pattern, taking up a big chunk of the ski, so it's going to give you good grip going up hills. And uh, big and fat, lots of flotation and stability and powder, a lot of side cut. Uh, it's going to make nice turns. It's a good, good, all around, bigger mountain, bigger backcountry kind of ski. The Razi BC125, available in backcountry downhill package number two. All right, in backcountry downhill package number three, we have the Fisher S-Bound 125. So as wide as the Razi BC-125, only uh, it's got some interesting technology incorporated into it. First off, their waxless pattern is actually inlaid into the base. Uh, all the other skis in this category, the waxless pattern is a molded uh, feature on the base of the ski. With Fisher, they actually lay it in, and these glide areas are a sintered material. So you can actually put a hot wax on there and get a really, really good glide with that. And the pattern is pretty unique, where it, it um, is placed in an optimum position for the best grip and glide properties. Uh, so by the, fact, by the fact that they can lay it in there, that really gives them the versatility to make the, the ski that has the best combination of grip and glide. And then another really exciting feature this year in the S-Bounds uh, is the Easy Skin compatibility. This little slot right here uh, accepts the Easy Skin, and here it is. So when the scales don't give you enough grip, when you're really going to be going uphill for quite a long time, you can slap on this sort of a kicker skin. Um, it just pops through this slot right here locks into place, and then the climbing skin 
lays right, sticks right to the base and lays right on top of the scales. You got this plush material. You can get exceptional uh, or, or a much, much greater amount of grip going uphill, but yet still maintain some good glide. So if you're in some you know, really rolling type terrain um, where the, the, the uphills are pretty steep and those scales just aren't doing it, this is a really good alternative. Um, and then when you get to the top and you're going to be spending a lot of time going downhill, you just peel them off and they come with a nice little pouch and you stash them away. So the S-Bound 125, uh, new this year, brand new ski and uh, available in backcountry downhill package number three. And then our last downhill package is the S-Bound 112. So it has the same easy skin compatibility, the same type of base, uh, only it's a narrower ski. Um, so, you know, you're moving maybe away from exclusive downhill, you're going to be spending more time, say, kicking and gliding on some trails. Maybe you're doing hut-to-hut -to -hut tours, so you want a ski that glides a little bit better than the really wide skis. And um, so it's almost like a bridge between the backcountry touring and the backcountry downhill ski. Um, but it's a great, great alternative uh, for anything aside from the biggest, steepest type terrain. Um, there it is in the backcountry downhill package number four. So there are the skis. Now, as far as boots go, we have two options. We've got the Scott Excursion. It used to be the Garmon Excursion. Uh, you'll notice with these uh, hard shell backcountry boots, they're pretty low as compared to like a Tele boot. So they're still very light. Even though it's plastic, it's pretty lightweight. And the bellows that uh, Scott uses, the material is a softer P-Bax than the shell, so it flexes pretty naturally. Almost feels like a leather boot a little bit, more than like your full plastic boot would feel. Um, it's light. It's a great all-around backcountry telly boot um, and perfectly suited with any of these skis here. Great option. You know, we feel with these four skis, the plastic boot is your, really your best option. Um, we wouldn't really recommend a hard or soft shell boot on any of these skis, with maybe the exception of the S-Bound 112. Um, but again, you're in the backcountry downhill category, so you're really looking to make some big turns. So you need a plastic boot. And the Scott Excursion is an excellent, excellent boot. And it fits medium to wide feet really well. The Scarpa T4, this thing is stiffer laterally. It's got a stiffer forward flex. It has a ski walk mode. Uh, so it's a little bit more powerful boot. So if your optimum priority, you know, your priority is optimum power going downhill, then this is probably a better option. But it might just come down to fit. Um, this is a little bit narrower fit. So if you have a, you know, especially wide foot, you might just stick with a Scott and, uh, you know, make sure your feet are nice and comfortable. So there's the uh, Scarpa T4. Um, bindings over here, quickly. Uh, the Volley Hardwire 3 pin, you know, it, it, uh, it's a good backcountry touring binding. Um, you can take these cables off and just ski it with the toe because of the pins. Your boot won't slip, slip out. And that's good for long days where you're kicking and gliding on flat you know, rolling terrain, um, you can take those cables off and just ski without, with less resistance. But otherwise, you've got a compression cartridge here when, it's in, you know, when your cables are on and uh, a good, you know, pretty powerful um, backcountry telemark binding. If you want more power for downhill, then you move into the, the Vole switchback bindings, the switchback here and the switchback X2. Big difference is you'll, you'll notice first off, the, um, they look pretty similar, but the wings on the X2 are longer, um, this part. So you get more binding to boot contact, plus the pivot point is moved further back. So that means when your heel comes off in a tele turn, uh, the cartridges engage quicker, you get edge pressure faster. So it's a more powerful, more uh, really downhill focused binding. Plus the spring cartridges are stiffer. So the X2 is the real downhill focused binding. Um, I wouldn't recommend this binding if you're doing a lot of kicking and gliding on flats. The hardwire is your best for kicking and gliding on flats. And then the switchback, standard switchback kind of falls in the middle. Both switchbacks have this feature, the uh, tour mode where you can flick. So in lockdown mode, you know, your cables pivot, the toe piece stays locked down to the ski. You can flick this lever and then the whole binding will pivot. And you do that so you have resistance free skinning when you're going straight up a mountain or maybe kicking and gliding on flats. It takes all the resistance away from the cables and just gives you a freer, easier feel, um, less resistance for, you know, when you're slogging along. Um, and then when you get to the top, you want to lock that down so that your ball, your foot stays firm, you know, in place on the binding and you can steer uh, with all of that binding and get good turns. So you've got three binding options to kind of work your way to choose from. Um, and uh, finally, 
our pole, <laughs> we have two pole options. This is the Black Diamond Traverse adjustable pole. It's just a workhorse. We love it. It's a great, great pole. Um, it has the flick lock adjustment. You just pop that open. You slide it to whatever um, height you need, and you're good to go. We also offer the Razor Carbon Pole, essentially the same features, only with a carbon shaft, so it's a little bit lighter, quite a bit lighter, actually. Um, but this guy is just just a really great all-around pole for just about any kind of backcountry use. Really like this pole, the Black Diamond Traverse. Um, I showed you the easy skin. You know, it's always a good idea to get a set of climbing skins. These are the Black Diamond Ascension skins, uh, all rolled up here and haven't been used yet, but they lay just on the base of the ski, tip to tail, to give you the best possible grip for going straight up to the top of the mountain, top of the ridge. You get up, you peel them off, throw them in your pack, and you rip down to the bottom. Um, always consider a bottle of Easy Glide Wax. Yes, they're waxless skis, but in certain conditions, the snow will stick. It'll slow you down. Uh, you rub this on the base, over the scales, tip to tail, you get a lot better glide. Snow won't stick as easily, especially when it's warmer. Um, consider that. And that, I think, is it. Yeah, so <laughs> quick run through of the skis, boots, bindings, and poles, and some accessories for our backcountry downhill packages. Thanks for watching, and uh, come back again. I'm Ryan from ORS Cross Country Skis Direct.